a threat to Israel's security and accused the broadcaster of using the offices to incite terror, which Al Jazeera has strongly denied. Well, let's talk now to Tim Dawson, who is Deputy General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists. Thank you very much for joining us on BBC News. I wondered if I could start off by getting your reaction to what has happened. I'm, I'm absolutely horrified. Um, the Israeli Defence Forces really have no business in Zone A of the West Bank. That should be wholly under the control of the Palestinian Authority. And the sight of, of fully armed combat troops bursting into a broadcast office and ordering them out at 10 minutes notice is absolutely horrific. It, 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 it's a grievous blow to media freedom uh, in Palestine, one of a succession of blows that have been dealt by the Israeli Defence Force uh, and, and, and the Israeli government. I, I mean, there are kind of the, the, the detailed revelations are even more horrific. The ripping down of a picture of uh, Shireen Abu Akhla, who the Israeli military killed two years ago, the confiscation of computers, which presumably will allow interrogation and potentially the uh, uncovering of sources for Al Jazeera's stories. Uh, it, it's very hard to think of a a, a worse look for a country that claims to be a democracy. Now, Israel has uh, said that it was intelligence assessment that determined that the office was being used to incite terror, to support terrorist activities, and that the channel broadcasts endanger the security and public order in both the area and the state of Israel as a whole. That is what the Israelis are saying. How difficult is it for journalists to cover the conflict with such strong views on all sides? Well, very difficult indeed. Uh, we know that, that uh, Israeli domestic newspapers such as Haaretz have been accused of being an enemy within by the Israeli government. We know that uh, foreign correspondents were barred from the Gaza Strip at the outset of this conflict. And we know that there has been an absolutely horrific death toll among those brave Gaza journalists who continue to report, more than, I mean, significantly more than 100 of whom have lost their lives. Uh, I mean, this is a very, very crude attempt to uh, control the narrative, and one that, to be perfectly honest, I think, I think it paints Israel in such a bad light that even many people who would instinctively feel support and warmth towards Israel will look at those pictures and feel the deepest sense of discomfort. If we look um, wider, away from just Israel and the issues in Gaza, say, for example, if we look at the war in Ukraine as well, how hard is it for journalists to get an accurate picture of what is going on in these conflict zones? Uh, I think in some respects it's harder than, than perhaps it's ever been, uh, you know, without sort of going into a, a PhD dissertation on a history of war reporting. Um, but, you know, the attempts of uh, national interests to define and coerce narratives to suit their, their, their purposes has never been greater. Um, and, you know, we know in the Russian domestic media that um, there is almost no reporting that is not... Um, you know, overseen by Putin. I know that within Ukraine, uh, quite draconian controls have been in place to try and control the narrative coming out from there. So actually, the you know the uh, attempts to produce accurate, dispassionate, objective news is really, really hard. And actually, the people at the you know the real battlefront of doing this, reporters, camera workers, on the ground, many of whom are, are losing their lives or being injured, really is quite horrendous. How much has social media changed the way that reporting happens? The fact that in the old days, um, nobody had access to the same amount of news wires and what was going on on the ground. And that has changed as social media has become more popular. And how does that impact the journalists, the professional journalists who are working in these areas? Uh, quite profoundly. And, and, you know, in a sense, in the way that, you know, social media has kind of crept up on us and grown in, 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 in power and, and penetration uh, over, you know, sort of two decades. It, it, it's sometimes a little, you know, hard, you know, one has to take stock. Um, the, you know, as soon as an event happens, images flood the world, you know, often more quickly than professional journalists can, can find their own images and can verify facts. So quite often, you know, images are shared, which people say happened 
five minutes ago in the street outside me, and it transpires within a couple of days that, in fact, they were shot in some previous conflict. Um, and, and, you know, that makes the job of, of, of professional reporters all the more difficult, but all the more necessary. Um, and, and I think there is an extent to which the public already slightly prices in where their information has come from. But we have to, we have, I think, to a, a job of education to do to make sure that people recognise that uh, not all news sources are equal and one, you know, some are far more deserving of our trust than others. Tim Dawson, Deputy General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists, thanks for your time.